ball is called. Very Sloan just pounded the side of his head. Can't believe his jazz aren't going to the line. Not a good sign here. Keen rubbing that right shoulder. And it's still grabbing. From the tip, Ellie has the ball. Keen gets a lot of physical therapy in between every single game of practice. Quick foul against Greg Foster. And Foster's had trouble in the matchup. Uh, and it's been Foster late in the games here at the summit that's been the defender against Elijah Wan. And they'll see if they can't get Elijah Wan cooking, who's been really feasting on the centers of the Utah Jazz. Rockets starting this quarter with Barkley on the bench. Eddie Johnson. Seven points for Eddie Johnson. So Dale Freed again making it happen with the right decision up top. Malone, fall away. Carl Malone has 20. Back to a one point game. fight his way across and that was called foul is on Foster it's so loud in here Akeem didn't even know the whistle had been blown Eddie Johnson a moment ago steps by Stockton who didn't close out properly and then when Carl Malone can hit this type of fadeaway jumper facing up wow and that's another reach in and another foul on Foster and it's three now the problem is Team fouls as Foster has that pain look on his face. Three fouls against Greg Foster, three team fouls. The next two, the Rockets are in the penalty. That means the free throws could make a big difference for them in winning the game. They go back to Elijah Wan. Gives to Sedale three. Finally, a cutter. Nice dump down pass. Utah is doubling down immediately on a team. He's got to make them pay. Well, this is a good play by the offense, and Stockton gets inside, makes the right read. Carr is there, a better reaction by the defense of the Houston Rockets and Kevin Willis. Eight on the shot clock. Stockton, and there's an offensive foul. Antoine Carr leveled Eddie Johnson. Technically, this is a screen. Realistically, <laughs> it's a brick wall. Uh, just a little bit of lean. That's a good, good flop by Eddie jo Johnson to draw that foul. Oh, I'll bet it wasn't all <laughs> flop. <laughs> well, not a hundred percent, but a team fade away to the baseline. Oh, Shannon oh. Anderson wide open and blocked by Olajuwon. Eddie Johnson. with the fadeaway jumper the first time. That, that sets the stage and then comes from nowhere and sends it out of there. Ignites the fast break. And Eddie Johnson, why not? Joy and celebration for the Rockets who lead it by seven, but plenty of time remains. Miller Genuine Draft presents a classic moment of the NBA at 50. And tonight, we look back at Game 6 of the 1995 Western Conference Finals, a battle of Texas that featured the Rockets and the Spurs. The two-series win. In recognition of this classic moment, the Miller Brewing Company will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. Just a few moments ago, Eddie Johnson finishing off the spurt by the Rockets with a shot that was called a three-pointer, but I think you'll see Eddie's feet clearly on the line. 
Uh, there was so much excitement in here. The ref not able to pick it up. Something that will really hurt Utah. Akeem's got six blocks on the night, three this quarter. But that's the home court advantage. The little things like that with the crowd going crazy can make the difference between winning and losing. Russell dishes off the car. He can't get it to fall. Play smart for Houston now. Jim Gray reporting that the Jazz are not going to quit. Well, they haven't. They've shown that they can withstand the runs that the, the, the Rockets have thrown on them, and the Rockets cannot afford to get happy and think that the game is over. And almost nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. Malone inside, and he threw the foul. That'll be Kevin Willis. And you see Carl rubbing that right palm. He's got a big open sore on that hand. Suffered in the earlier playoff series. Carl Malone's first trip to the free throw line tonight comes with 9.09 to play in the fourth quarter. In the two losses the Utah has suffered in this series, Malone averaged three and a half free throw attempts a game. In their three victories, almost 10 free throws a game. And Kevin Willis had it go off of his foot, out of bounds, it belongs to the Jazz. Get a rebound. Kevin Willis is matched up against Shandon Anderson on that rebound and couldn't even control. 24 on the clock for Utah. Stockton to the baseline, back outside. Malone puts up the jumper and hits. Carl Malone. 23 tonight. Now there's a reason why he's not getting to the free throw line. Making a lot of jumpers and not, uh, you know, the ball away and not having a contact on it. Olajuwon, and that foul is Antoine Carr. That's three on Carr. Let's go back to Carl Malone's jump shot. Carl Malone's phenomenal improvement in perimeter face-up jump shooting. It's just frustrating Rudy Tomjanovic, one of the game's great shooters in his own right. Also, the Rocket big men, Barkley and Willis, are not gambling on Carl in defensive low post. Elijah one has got to continue to go to the basket. Meanwhile, all you have to do is continue to go to Clyde Drexler. 82-75, Houston. Drexler comes up with the loose ball. Barkley wants to go one on one with Malone. Turn around. And Shannon Anderson has the rebound. Stocked it for three. And a big rebound by Olajuwon. Back come the Rockets. And a blocking foul at midcourt on Stockton. This. Terrific outlet there by Akeem and Clyde with that head down doesn't like to turn back to his left Stockton causing that contact that's number three on John Stockton but that is a fifth team foul and that's what's so crucial about the effort of Stockton trying to draw that foul and you could see Stockton trying to pull Drexler in and then draw it by flopping 27 points for Drexler tonight. Drexler is four of six tonight from behind the three-point line, and he's hit his last three. And the Rockets' main gunners 0 for 13 in game five completely turned that around tonight. Akeem with another great defensive stop. Drexler. Why Drexler is absolutely on fire tonight.
Juracek to the left hand. Ostertag with the follow, and he is fouled. Eddie Johnson has had the hot hand. We told you earlier about his shot. We understand that it has been ruled a two-pointer instead of a three. And there's Eddie Johnson with the last three-pointer. That was a three. So Dale Threed has played a marvelous floor game. Akeem Olajuwon, a defensive force, picks up his second foul. He's got six blocks and countless intimidations. 13 for Greg Ostertag. That's his first point of the second half. What Rudy Tomjanovich is counting on here in the final 625 is the experience of all of those players that are out there. And all of those players are long in the tooth, and this is a game <laughs> where you cannot afford to fool around with youth. Hey, stop him! Stop him! Don't fuck him! And him. Charles Barkley is talking to uh, Dick Devetta, talking about the pushing and shoving going on between himself and Russell. 620 to play, fourth quarter. I set up Drexler and Eddie Johnson here. Barkley right back at Malone. To the baseline, fade away. Malone got that one. Utah looking to get the Houston lead down into single digits. If you're the Rockets, you want the Jazz to have to work every 24 seconds to get a score. Ostertag, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Huge effort by Ostertag that time. Now, in the first half, he was finishing at the bucket. Here in the second half, he's missing, but the effort that he put forth to give him a second chance. Stockton with a miss. Ostertag keeps it alive, then gets it back, and a chance back at the line. Maybe that puts a little sore on him, too, but Akeem's paying him absolutely no respect, just letting him go wherever he wants. Ostertag in his second year out of Kansas. Ostertag has had a great run in this series from the free throw line. He's normally not that kind of stick from the line, but at 84% and perfect so far tonight. All the Utah Jazz big men stroke those free throws. 90 to 81, the Rockets by nine as we approach five and a half to play in the fourth quarter. The reason I say Elijah one's got to continue to go to work, the free throw <laughs> as he travels is going to be their ally. If they can just keep bringing the ball to the basket, they get to go to the line, penalty situation up. They haven't taken advantage of that. Here come the Jazz. Hornacek in the lane. Jeff Hornacek. And Houston wants timeout. The Jazz have cut the lead to seven with 5.18 to play here in the fourth quarter. You're watching the NBA on NBC. 7-point Houston lead, 5.18 to play, fourth quarter. Welcome back to the Summit in Houston. These head coaches, excellent coaches. Rudy Tomjanovich, Jerry Sloan, and maybe we can call this so you want to be a head coach in the NBA. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it sideline anxiety, but what happens is it's the misery of coaching. Watch the emotions that they go through and put forth. And these guys do that when they're winning. The commissioner, David Stern, right across the way from us, taking in the action. Jim Gray reporting from Houston's bench. Rudy telling him it's right there, but you got to go get it. It's not going to fall in your lap. Barkley across the middle. 16 for Barkley. And five minutes to play. I mean, both teams should know by now there's no quit in either one, and they're going to keep coming alone. Barkley with the rebound. Malone arguing about a no call. Eddie Johnson. That's a good shot for Eddie Johnson. Malone fouled from behind by Barkley and a great pass inside by John Stockton. That's number three on Barkley. The relentless pressure applied by Utah on the run right at you. Malone 
able to establish himself so deep in the crisp, sharp entry pass. No denying that. Paul Malone, one out of two from the line tonight. Twenty-four for the mailman. Rebounded by Drexler. Problem for the Rockets is they allowed Clyde Drexler to not touch the ball for a lot of times here. Olajuwon back outside. Eddie Johnson spins, gets his man in the air off the glass. <laughs> Fourteen for the 15-year veteran out of Illinois. Now well, Sloan looked up at the clock and he knows he's right in a crucial period where they got to continue to score the ball, or otherwise this one's over and they're headed for Game Seven. Find Fidel three for the Rockets. Johnson. Too hard off the glass. Ostertag has it. Coming up on three and a half to play. Terrific game for Greg Ostertag. Stockton for three. Out of bounds to Houston. A higher gun. That's what Eddie Johnson has become late in the stages of his career. But he shows you that when you are a shooter, you are sweet. And you can see how he has hurt the Utah Jazz in his career. Some huge games for Eddie Johnson. Stops in Kansas City, Sacramento, Phoenix, Seattle, Charlotte, Indiana, and now Houston. You ready to play for that? Barkley on the baseline, had it stripped by Malone. And Threat makes the foul in the backcourt. Good foul for Dale Threat, who has been the difference here, I think, for the Rockets. Drexler, of course, huge, but Maloney was not getting it done. Everybody is on their feet here at the summit. <laughs> they want one more hoop. They think one more hoop will give them a lead. They're ready to explode. John Stockton at the line. Stockton three out of three and 13 points tonight. Home court has ruled so far in this series. Utah won the first two games in Salt Lake City. Houston won games three and four. Utah took game five back in Utah. Eight-point game, three minutes to play. Slide's going right here. And Brian Russell has his hand in the air before Dick Bavetta makes the call. That's number three on Russell. That's what the Rockets want. They want free throw attempts. They've got to cash in on them. But if they score from the line, that prevents the Jazz from getting a mistake or a missed shot, and they're coming back and scoring themselves. Drexler, not only sharp from the field, seven for seven from the free throw line. You know, it, what, what's interesting is how players respond to criticism. You know, what they're saying here, where's been Clyde Drexler? Same thing in Utah, and Carl Malone responded with a huge game five, big game seven for Drexler, 10 and a quarter for Clyde. And 33 on the night. Russell, three-pointer, top of the key, drained it. Brian Russell has 12, 96-89, Houston. Perfect execution of the set offense. Guys, keep it on the move for Utah. Now well, that's a move right there. Into the lane. Ostertag got the block and grabbed the loose ball. Terrific block by Ostertag, and that shows you how long he is. Stocked it. And Ooh. three. Thought he got all ball. That's number four on Sedale three. On the weak side for the Utah Jazz, they just keep interchanging, screening away, coming back to the ball. Brian Russell gets that jumper, 
right down the lane. Oh, ball. Tough call. And Rudy Tomjanovich cannot believe it. He's died a thousand deaths tonight. John Stockton, 15 points, 12 assists tonight. Remember in game four, the Jazz closed with the Fury to tie it up. And the Rockets call time with 2.20 to play. Fourth quarter, 96-91, Rockets in the lead. We'll be back. There's a great right hand and a great right arm. Evander Holyfield, heavyweight champion. Warren Moon, quarterback extraordinaire. There's our timeout situation with 2.20 remaining. Houston with a five-point lead. The Rockets need a win to force Game 7 Sunday in Salt Lake City. Your leading scorers. Finally, good balance for the Rockets, something that the Jazz have had throughout the series. Pick and roll. Barkley has Russell down low, got away with a little bit of a shove, goes to the basket and is fouled by Ostertag. A little bit of a shove. When was the last time you were shoved by Charles? <laughs> That's five on Ostertag. Barkley with a bit of a shove to get away from <laughs> Ryan Russell and then was followed by Ostertag. Remember that this has not been a strong night for Barkley from the free throw line. Five-point lead. Everybody exhaling here at the summit. Barkley, six of nine from the line, now seven of ten. 17 points, six rebounds, five assists. And Eddie Johnson goes to the bench. They bring Mario in for some defensive purposes. I wouldn't be surprised if Eddie comes right back. This game is far from over. Barkley gets them both. 98, 91, under two minutes to play. Great bump by Drexler on Carl Malone. Brian Russell for three. Got it! Brian Russell with 15, 98, 94 Rockets. Barkley in the post. Now, the quicker you move the ball, the more difficult it is for the defense to see how quickly Barkley moves against Carl Malone. Ellie for three. And rebounded by Malone. They've gone away from Akeem. They've gone away from Drexler. And they put Eddie Johnson on the bench. Stockton into the lane, got it! And the Houston lead is down to two with a minute 20 to play. Drexler lost it, coming across the lane. Stockton, three on two, keeps it. Tie game. The same kind of furious finish for the Utah Jazz here at the summit. Down, but it was Stockton making the tying bucket in game four. He brings them back with two quick energizers right at the hoop. Seven-point run for the Utah Jazz has pulled them into a tie at 98. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Seconds remaining. Utah and Houston tied at 98. Each team with a full timeout and a 20-second timeout remaining. Utah has scored 12 of the last 14 points to pull even. The crowd deflated, stunned, and normally they're up during the break. It's totally quiet. And Carl Malone talking to Charles Barkley. Olajuwon back outside. So Dale Creek Houston. Great diving tip there by Clyde Drexler. Sedale cannot get the jumper to go down. 49 seconds to play in a new 24. Olajuwon blocked by Ostertag. Gets his own rebound. Outside again. Ellie along the baseline. Tried to give it away. Barkley comes up with it. Again. And he'll go to the line. Great work on the offensive blast by Charles Barkley. Uh, 
the Rockets bailed out here. Ellie almost threw this one away, but Barkley dug it out. He got lower than anybody else. Now he's got another chance at the line. That's six personals on Greg Ostertag. Ostertag has been huge in plugging up the middle against Elijah Wan. Stocked in pain at the call. Barkley a chance from the line. Pay tribute to that man, 16 points, 14 rebounds for Greg Ostertag tonight. Two-point lead for the Rockets. Now it's the Dale Threat's turn to try to stop Stockton. on the move in the lane tie game and timeout for the Rockets 22 for John Stockton slow start tonight in a big second half 12 in the quarter and we've been here before in game four watch Stockton lean in with body control and get the floater and now it is win or tie time for the Houston Rockets but Sloan had no hesitation in calling Stockton's number look at the control he was on his way down and he's still right handed but right now the Rockets just play for one 22.4 remaining there's the timeout situation last Sunday here in Houston these teams went to the final second side at 92 and Eddie Johnson hit the game-winning three-pointer at the buzzer we're tied at one point. but Eddie's out of the game right now he had a strong fourth quarter here Rudy T with just a couple minutes to go brings in Mario Elliott Mario has not had a good finish here let's check in with Jim Gray Jim all right, now Rudy Tomjanovich is diagramming a play. The first thing he said to his team is, guys, run the clock all the way down. We're either going to win or tie this game. Then he turned around and he said, Eddie, I'm coming with you. You're coming back into the game. We'll have more as he diagrams the play, Greg. All right, Jim. Well, we know what Red Rudy is planning on doing. He's planning on either winning the game or going into overtime and regrouping his troops. If you're Jerry Sloan, what you got to tell your team is no fouls. Try to play this straight up hard defense because if you foul, that puts them on the free throw line. And if you foul late, you almost have no chance of getting back. What's at stake? The Utah Jazz, if they can pull out a victory here, go to the NBA Finals for the first time. They have won once in 12 games in the Western Conference Finals on the road. What the Rockets are trying to do is play again on Sunday. The question for the Rockets is how quickly you put the hands in the ball of your playmaker, whether it's Barkley, whether it's Akeem, whether it's Clyde Drexler. Your spot-up guys, they'll just keep moving. Drexler, Eddie Johnson, Sedale Treat, Olajuwon, and Barkley. For the Jazz, Antoine Carr, Paul Malone, Brian Russell, Stockton, and Hornacek. 20 seconds to play. Watch Stockton. He'll try to read the passing lane. Drexler holding the ball. Five seconds. Drexler on the move. Off the glass. No rebound. Timeout called with 2.5 on the clock. Clyde was certain that he had that one. Made that big spin, but a little bit too hard off the window. Clock has been readjusted to 2.8 when we come back. And it just rims out. Now Utah, I say they run the play where they hit Carl Malone high. He swings through, steps back, and hits that fadeaway 21-footer. 2.8 seconds is a ton of time. So they have at least time to make two passes and get a shot. The Rockets have no fouls to give. And Stockton has been the man here in the fourth quarter. For tonight, Malone has taken the majority of the shots as usual. He leads the Jazz in scoring with 24. Stockton right behind him. Hornacek has had a good night shooting the basketball. It may be MVP time here for the Utah Jazz. If anybody other than Stockton or Malone take this jumper, 
There'll be questions asked for eternity. Well, I don't know. Hornacek has been good in the game. So has Russell. Russell with two three-pointers. What they want is a good look. They want a chance to give themselves an opportunity to go to the finals, not go to overtime. Barkley in the jazz huddle. Charles Barkley looking over Antoine Carr's shoulder and came away smiling. And again, problem here is you don't want to foul the shooter. Who's going to guard Carl Malone? Barkley. They got a keen on Antoine Carr. Russell will inbound at half court. Uh -oh. Stockton, open three. Hit it! John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals. finishes with 25 points the last three at the buzzer what a way to answer Eddie Johnson's winning three-pointer in game four and what a great moment for the Utah franchise their proudest moment ever breakdown defensively nobody stays where Stockton Barkley has to come out we have never seen this kind of emotion from Stockton <laughs> and Malone. And finally, their day has come, but the catch was too easy. And Stockton, who had been the hot hand in the quarter, finishes up the game 15 in the quarter with that three. 25 points, 13 assists. The Utah Jazz says, yes, we are moving on with a four games to two victory over the Houston Rockets. Rudy Tom Janovich says there goes the season. Let's go to Jim Gray. Jim. All right. Thank you very much Greg. John Stockton you guys 15 points for you in the quarter. Tell us about that last shot that's sending you to the finals. Who knows. I'm just glad it went in. Uh, it's very exciting. You had that big run there at the end of the quarter. I believe it was 15 to 4. Did you guys at any point over there think hey we're headed toward game 7. Uh, not for sure. We, we, uh, we knew we weren't out of it and we knew our guys wouldn't give up. Nobody gave up, and, and uh, all we had to do was get back in that ball game. They might tighten up a little bit, but I just feel so happy we got that done. John, tell us. It's been a lifetime dream for you to get to the finals. Tell us about making this accomplishment now. Absolutely. None to say. Can you beat Chicago? Uh, we'll find out. Nobody thought that we could beat Houston. Carl, a lifetime dream to get to the finals. You said you might cry if you made it. Are you almost there in tears? Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. You know, what we've been through as a team, Everybody stuck together and believed in each other. And it's just awesome. It's totally awesome. Uh, How about that shot by John? Was that was, was when diagram? It, when it left his hand, it looked like it was good when it left. So I didn't know how to react because it looked good when it left. But yeah, I'm, so, I'm so proud of the guys. I really am. Everybody just hung in there. We got down. And we said we wanted to win it here. And they make it that much sweeter to win here because they've knocked us out a couple of times. Got this awesome feeling. Carl, congratulations. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thank you very much. Coach, was that just how you diagrammed it there? Well, John made the shot. Everything looks good whenever they make the shot. It doesn't make any difference what you run. At any point, you had said to your guys in your huddle, with about three minutes left, guys, I'm proud of the way that you competed. Whatever happens from here. Did that loosen the group up? I don't know if it did. Listen, you have a chance. You're a former bull. In fact, when you walk in to the complex out in Deerfield, Illinois, there's a picture of you in a Bulls uniform that says, thanks for everything. Now you get the opportunity to go back against them. Your thoughts on playing the Bulls in the finals? Well, I haven't given much thought to that. I never thought we'd ever get there, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, it's been a long road to get back to that situation. Uh, but uh, I've been fortunate. I've got great guys that uh, work with us and the coaching staff and our players have been great to work with. Jerry, congratulations. We'll see you Sunday. Thank you very much, Jim. All right, let's send it back now over to Greg Gumpel. All right, Jim Gray, as we take another look at the great shot by John Stockton, an outstanding end to an outstanding series, guys. And a terrific screen, and that's what allowed Stockton to get open, and he had all day to catch, and there, there was no decision about what he was going to do. Got it up and down. You see the clock, and I guess turnabout is fair play, and, you know, finally justice is served. And now the two best passing teams play in the finals, a battle of MVPs, Carl Malone, Michael Jordan, what could be better? Let's go. They split two games in the series. Once again, our final score, the Utah Jazz 103, the Houston Rockets 